In this example, we're given an equilibrium equation, the value of kq, and one equilibrium concentration, and we're asked to find an initial concentration. Consider the following equilibrium equation. H2 gas plus Br2 gas gives 2HBr gas, which has an equilibrium constant kq equal to 15.0. Equal moles of H2 and Br2 are added to a 2 liter container and it is closed. When the system reaches equilibrium, the concentration of HBr is found to be 0.244 molar. The question asks what mass of Br2 was initially added to the container. Before we find the mass of Br2 initially added, we will find the initial concentration of Br2. This can be done with the help of an ice table or ice box as some teachers call it. Notice the balanced equilibrium equation is added to the second horizontal row of this table and everything is lined up so that each species has its own vertical column. Remember I in square brackets stands for initial concentration and C in square brackets stands for changes in concentration as the reaction proceeds from an initial state to equilibrium and E in square bracket stands for the equilibrium concentration of the species. The question tells us that when equilibrium is reached, the concentration of HBr is 0.244 molar. So we write 0.244 molar in the cell for the equilibrium concentration of HBr. The unit M for molarity can be dropped in ice tables as the square brackets around I, C, and E mean that all quantities are molar concentrations. So we can just leave it out. The question tells us that equal moles of H2 and Br2 are added to the container, but we're not given any values for the initial concentrations or moles. It only gives us the concentration of HBr at equilibrium. It doesn't say anything about adding any HBr initially. Therefore, the initial concentration of HBr is zero. Because the moles of H2 and Br2 are equal, their initial concentrations will also be equal. We'll let X represent the initial concentration of both H2 and Br2. It's important to remember that ice tables usually deal with concentrations, not with moles or grams. So we'll put X's in for initial concentrations of H2 and Br2. Since they are equal, they can both be called X we'll eventually find out the value for X or the initial concentration of Br2. Then in a later step we can determine the initial moles and the initial mass of Br2. In order to go from 0 to 0.244 the concentration of HBr must have increased by 0.244 molar. So we write plus 0.244 here for the change in concentration of HBr. Because the change in concentration of HBr is positive and the concentration of HBr increased, the reaction must have moved to the right as it went from its initial state to equilibrium. Because the reaction moved to the right and the concentration of HBr went up, it means that the concentrations of the reactants, H2 and Br2, both must have gone down, so their changes in concentration will both be negative so we can write a minus sign in these two cells. To find out how much the concentration of Br2 went down, we can start with the change we know, the change in the concentration of HBr. To find the change in concentration of Br2, we have to use the coefficient ratio, or mole ratio, of Br2 to HBr in the balanced equation. The coefficient on Br2 is 1, and the coefficient on HBr is 2. So the coefficient ratio of Br2 to HBr is 1 to 2, or 1 over 2. Or we could say that the mole ratio is 1 mole of Br2 to 2 moles of HBr. So to find the change in concentration of Br2, we multiply 0.244 by 1 over 2. 0.244 times 1 over 2 equals 0.122 and because the reaction moves to the right and the concentration of Br2 goes down, the change in concentration of Br2 is negative 0.122 molar. 
Now looking at the H2, we see the coefficient ratio or mole ratio of H2 to HBr is also 1 to 2 or times 1 over 2. So the change in concentration of H2 is 0.244 times 1 over 2, which equals 0.122 molar. Again, because the reaction has moved to the right, the concentration of H2 has gone down and its change in concentration is negative 0.122 molar. So now we have the changes in concentration for all three species as the system moves from its initial state to equilibrium. To establish equilibrium, the reaction moves to the right and the concentrations of H2 and Br2 both go down by 0.122 molar while the concentration of HBr goes up by 0.244 molar. Our next step is to find the equilibrium concentrations of H2 and Br2. Remember, equilibrium concentration is initial concentration plus change in concentration. So the equilibrium concentration of H2 will be x plus negative 0.122, or simply x minus 0.122. Similarly, the equilibrium concentration of Br2 will be x minus 0.122 which we'll write here. Now we have the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. In order to solve for x, we can insert these into the kq expression. To write the kq expression, we use the given reaction. So keq equals the concentration of HBr squared divided by the product of the concentration of H2 times the concentration of Br2. We were given that the value of Kq for this reaction is 15.0. So we substitute 15.0 in for the value of Kq and write it here. The ice table tells us that the equilibrium concentration of HBr is 0.244 molar. So we substitute 0.244 in for the concentration of HBr in the Kq expression. The exponent 2 on the concentration of HBr in the Kq expression reminds us that the point 244 must also be squared. The ice table tells us that the equilibrium concentrations of H2 and Br2 are both x minus 0.122. So for the product of the concentration of H2 times the concentration of Br2, we can substitute x minus 0.122 in brackets all squared, as shown here. Looking at the fraction on the right, we see that both the numerator and the denominator are squared. We can get rid of these exponents of 2 on the fraction by taking the square root of both sides. So we put 15.0 within a square root sign and remove the exponents 2 from the numerator and the denominator of the fraction on the right and we get the equation shown in yellow. The square root of 15 is 3.873, so we substitute 3.873 for the square root of 15 on the left side. We'll carry this expression to the top of the next column so we can fit the whole calculation on the screen. In order to get x minus 0.122 out of the denominator, we multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 0.122, as shown here. Now we expand the expression on the left by multiplying both the x and the 0.122 that are in brackets by 3.873. 3.873 times x is 3.873x and 3.873 times 0.122 is equal to 0.4725. In the process of gradually isolating x, we get rid of the negative 0.4725 on the left by adding 0.4725 to both sides of the equation. So now we have 0.244 plus 0.4725 on the right side. Adding 0.244 and 0.4725 on the right side we get a total of 0.7165 on the right. So now our equation is 3.873x equals 0.7165. To isolate x, we divide both sides by 3.873. So we have x equals 0.7165 
divided by 3.873, which is equal to 0.185. So now we know that x is equal to 0.185. Going back to the initial concentration row in the ice table, remember we had assigned x to represent both the concentration of H2 and the concentration of Br2. Now that we know that x equals 0.185, we can substitute 0.185 in for both x's here. So the initial concentrations of both H2 and Br2 are 0.185 molar. The question is asking about Br2, or bromine gas. So we'll point out here that the initial concentration of Br2 is 0.185 molar. Notice down on the bottom that the question asks for the mass of bromine that was initially added to the container. So we need to convert the molar concentration of Br2 to mass in grams. We start the conversion by expressing the molarity as 0.185 moles of Br2 per liter. Then we multiply by 2.00 liters. This would give us moles of Br2, but we want grams, so we need one more conversion factor. Using a periodic table, we calculate the molar mass of Br2 to be 159.8 grams per mole. So we multiply by the conversion factor 159.8 grams of Br2 to 1 mole of Br2. We cancel out the liters and the moles of Br2. And we're left with the unit grams of Br2, so our answer will have the unit grams of Br2. Grams is the most common unit for mass, and the mass is the quantity that we're asked for. Multiplying 0.185 times 2.00 times 159.8 gives us 59.1 grams of Br2. So the initial mass of Br2 is 59.1 grams. So now we have answered the question that was asked, and we can state that the mass of Br2 initially added to the container was 59.1 grams. Now even though we've already answered the question, there is a way we can actually check to see if the value we got for x is correct. Remember the algebra involving the KEQ expression enabled us to determine a value of 0.185 for x. What we can do is substitute this value for x back into the expressions for the equilibrium concentrations of H2 and Br2 in the ice table. So we'll do this here. Here are the equilibrium concentrations in the ice table. We have determined that x equals 0.185 molar. So we'll substitute 0.185 in for both x's like this. So the equilibrium concentrations of H2 and Br2 are both 0.185 minus 0.122. 0.185 minus 0.122 comes out to 0 0.0630. So the equilibrium concentrations of H2 and Br2 are both 0 0.0630 molar. Now we'll insert these values for equilibrium concentration back into the KQ expression. If our value for x is correct, and these values are all correct, we should theoretically come up with a value of 15.0 for KQ. As we saw before, this is the KQ expression derived from the equilibrium equation. We substitute 0.244 for the concentration of HBr. And because the concentration of HBr is squared in the KQ expression, we square the 0.244. We substitute 0 0.0630 for the concentration of H2, and also 0 0.0630 for the concentration of Br2. 0 0.0630 times 0 0.0630 is 0 0.0630 squared. So we're left with 0.244 squared over 0 0.0630 squared. Working this out gives us a value of 15.0. So our calculated value for KQ is 15.0. This agrees exactly with the given value for KQ in the initial statement of the problem. So now we can be confident that the value of 0.185 for x is correct, and the answer we got for the initial mass of Br2 using 0.185 for x should also be correct. Mm -hmm.